So you want to build a Tesla coil. You don't want to put that much effort into it, but you still want to have a, a cool outcome. So you want to get some sparks going out of a, a coil, a coil like this one. So what's the easiest way to do something like that? Well, the very famous circuit called Slayer Exciter. This is a circuit that is made by one transistor, an LED, two coils, and I have some capacitors as well, and that's it. You can scavenge all of this from like, uh, like old uh, components, or like parts and stuff. You should be able to find these, all of them. You can replace this with like other transistors. So essentially, this is quite cheap. So as you saw in the beginning, don't expect that great of an arc. Building a Tesla coil looks kind of like this. So if you're spending like that much money, you're gonna get that much of like that big of an arc, that cool of an arc. And as you get, as you want bigger and bigger per arcs, the more money you have to spend. Because then you get to the big ones and you pay like so much money for just small increases. But hey, that's the world of Tesla coils. But hey, right now we're about here. So, you know, don't worry that much. So, uh, now that you have seen a small picture and I explain it, let me explain really quickly how the circuit works and we'll get right to building it. Let's discuss a bit about how this circuit works. Here I have a very crude diagram of the circuit. Here we have a our battery here of it has 9 volts, but this is wrong. You can have any voltage you want, 15 volts. I run mine at up to 28. Here we have two MKP capacitors in parallel that just allow the power the circuit to suck up more power. You can it, it works without these, but it's nice to have them. Here is 0.33 and 0.66 um, microfarads in total. And then here we have a 2.2, uh, uh, 22 k resistor to the base of the NT36. Also to the base of the, the base of the NT, we have the bottom of our secondary coil and also the negative of an LED. The LED positive is connected to the negative rail. I know it might seem weird, but that's that's how it's correctly done. And then the other side of this is connected to the positive, and then the other side is connected to one side of our NT uh, transistor. The NT36. This is a self oscillating circuit. It might seem incomplete here, but this actually forms a tank, a tank circuit. This is a capacitor to ground, so that's how it completes the circuit and it self oscillates at very high frequencies. So that's basically all about the circuit. It's a very simple circuit. There are tons of guides online, and it's one of the most built circuits for electronic beginners because it's very basic and it's actually like a cool one to get people into electronics. So uh, that's about it. So let's get to building it. So first we have the, the secondary coil here, this is the big whip coil with uh, about 400 turns of wire. You can do any from 300 to 400 turns. Uh, it's about 0.2 millimeter wire. You can use 0.3, 0.4, but nothing below or above that, for a slayer at least. Because you either get a hard to wind coil with very bad specs, or a very tall coil for the turns you want, which then just will require more turns on the primary, then just, just don't do that, just do something like this. Then you have the primary core, just two turns of some solid core wire. Some coils may need one turn or three turns. You can figure that out after you build the circuit. You of course need the transistor. This is an NT36 NPN transistor. You don't have to get this exact. You can get a tip 31 c or a BC247 or anything like that. This one is just the best performer, but it costs like 12 euro. So if you don't want to spend any money, you can get those transistors I said from uh, they're widely used in random uh, electronics uh, thing that you can just salvage from there. Then you have an, an LED, this is just a normal red LED, which is used to pull down the, the, the base voltage down to 0.7 volts. And also it'll indicate if the circuit is also living. And then you have a 22 kilo ohm uh, resistor, this uses a gate resistor. A breadboard to build everything on, alligator clips to connect the coil, and the uh, the power supply to the voltage, to the circuit, a top load, a top load acts as a, a capacitor to to ground. Now this is not necessary but it really increases the performance of your circuit. And then for lastly we have these MKP caps. These aren't necessary but they will increase the performance of your circuit. They will make the sparks longer and drop a bit more current. So the more capacitors the better. Make sure they're MKP and high quality. If you get electrolytics, like some videos say, they will eventually turn into fireworks with a high frequency. And then lastly, we have some breadboard wires to connect everything together. Now, uh, let's go ahead and see how everything goes together on the breadboard. 
Okay, we have our breadboard on the close-up because we have three breadboards together just to give us enough space for all the components. Now first, take your MKP caps if you're using them, if not just skip the step. Take your MKP caps and put them somewhere on the board that you'll have access to all the pins. Mine here. So I have two pins this way and two pins this way so I can connect it to all the components. Do the same with this one. This one, you can put it like uh, let's see, here should be fine, just make sure you can plug in two wires to each of the sides. Now take two of your breadboard wires, I'm gonna put one here, and another one here. Now this here is the positive and negative of your supply, here is where you put your supply voltage, you can put anywhere from 10 to 30 volts, or you can go even higher, I don't go higher than 30 because that's how much my supply here can handle. Then you connect another wire here and connect it here to parallel to this capacitor. Remember these capacitors are meant to go uh, parallel. So there. So now we have these two capacitors in parallel. Next we take our transistor. This transistor has these leads on it because I uh, broken the leads off, so I just soldered some leads. So just put them on your circuit like this. I one sure. So that's in. Next, take your LED. Put the uh, positive side to ground. I know this might sound weird. But this is the point of this LED. So take its positive side and put it to a ground rail here. Like that. So you have the positive to ground and the negative out here. And you will connect the negative to the gate of your, or the base actually, the base of your NPN. Next, take this resistor, your gate, your base resistor, I keep calling it a gate and just put it on the gate and then between any of the other pins and then take a wire and connect that transistor to the to the positive supply voltage then we want to take a wire to the last pin of the transistor here as well uh, we will connect this to our negative supply and one more wire to the middle pin and this is what we will connect to the one side of our uh, coil and the other side of the coil will get connected to positive supply voltage lastly we need to connect the supply rails to the parallel to the capacitors so that's one side and here we have another one. There. And that's the whole circuit. That's all that it is. There's nothing more to this. So I'm going to zoom out now and show you all the external connections and we're going to try it out. So now we have zoomed out of the circuit and it's time to make all of our external connections. First, take your big coil, put it down somewhere and connect the the bottom of the bottom wire to a little pin and then you need to put it on the gate or the base of your transistor because this must have the coil must give feedback to the transistor this is a self oscillating circuit next take your alligator clips and it's time that we connect all the coils together to the sub and the circuit the supply voltage so take the positive that I plug into my power supply here, you can't see, but it's the positive. And then this side here is the, the positive of your circuit, so connect it there. Take the negative of your supply and connect it to the negative side of the circuit. And then as for the coils, we'll take our primary coil, put it over the secondary, Make sure the primary doesn't touch the secondary because you might have some arc over and that's not good for the secondary nor for the circuit. So just the polarity right now, we'll just connect it 
any way we want and if the circuit doesn't work we'll see it'll uh, suck up some current but not a lot and then if you switch the polarity it should work that's the first step in troubleshooting the circuit is changing the polarity of the the, the primary coil now if i can just move this a bit into frame so here you have your uh, primary coil connected to the second connected to the circuit and then the secondary the bottom of the secondary is connected also to the base of your transistor now take your top loop if you have one i recommend you get one and then the best way of connecting to such top load is through electrical tape. So just get some electrical tape. I already have some on here and I'm not going to reuse it, so whatever. And then just take your this side of your coil. You need to sand it down, burn it to make sure it's conductive because these have an angle over them. And then here. And then that's essentially the whole circuit. That's all you have to do. That's it. That's all you need to do to build a very basic Tesla coil. So now, why don't we get ahead to testing it, and if it doesn't work, we'll get ahead to troubleshooting. So now it's time to test the coil. We have set this power supply to 12 volts, or 415 for now, just for you to get it tested. And we're turning it on and see what happens. So you see we get 100 milliamps pulled and no spark. If I pull it, you see nothing is really happening. So turn the circuit off. If this uh, shows max current, your power supply max, then something's wrong with your circuit, something you shorted something out, uh, check over your connections. If you see a stable 100, 100 milliamps, what you should do, get your coil and reverse its polarity. So here, now reverse polarity, and now let's check it this time. Oh, you see the current is much higher this time, which means that the circuit is probably working correctly. Now let's see if we can get an arc. Oh, as you can see, there's an arc. It is very weak, but it's there. So the circuit is working. So what we do now to make it better? Well, first of all, first step is moving your coil. So I'm going to try and position my coil a bit higher, and we'll see if that helps. I have uh, stationed my coil a bit higher using some clips, and after we turn it on, we'll see about the same current being pulled, but now... We are able to pull the arc a bit longer. Now this is pretty cool, but we can go even better, I think. So as you may recall, we I said that I would set this power supply to 15 volts to get testing with, but that's actually, as I said, really low voltage for this circuit. So if we turn this circuit on at 15 volts, we will see that not much is really happening. We can pull an arc, as you can see, there is an arc being drawn, but that's not that much. So, let's turn this off and step it up to a more proper voltage for a circuit like this. Let's do like 28 volts and let's see how that goes. Look at that. That's much better, isn't it? And that's what like actually stepping up the voltage does on some of these. But remember, changing the voltage will sometimes mean you have to change the amount of turns on your coil because that is dependent so it's technically a balance deck between the voltage and the turns and all that so just keep playing with it until you get performance that you know you think is suited for this build circuit it's a very simple circuit and I feel like even if it is your first electronic project it's something that everyone could really build and it's uh, fun getting to learn about like Tesla coils and all that and how you can like actually like 
build one. You can obviously make much better ones than these, and I have made better, one, better ones than these, as I said in the beginning. But this is a very nice place to start for anyone just trying to get into high voltage. If uh, there are any questions about the circuit or if there are any continuity errors, which there are, because I did have some problems that I had to, I didn't know what they are that I fixed. That's why this looks a bit different, but it's the same circuit. So if there are any questions, put them down in the comments. I'd be glad to answer them. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe because I'm a sellout and all that and I love my ego and when you people subscribe, you boost it. So that's great. So that's about it. Thank you for uh, watching this. Any, as I said, any questions, any tips, anything you want to uh, learn, put it down below. Give me any ideas for maybe what I should do next. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.